I speak to you today as a sinner to sinners, as the beloved of God to God's beloved, as one called to bear witness to those called to bear witness. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I made the statement that this was not the Lent that we would have chosen for ourselves, but this was a Lent that was kind of imposed upon us and it was a Lent that we did our best to observe. And today I say again to you something similar. This is not the Easter that we would have chosen for ourselves, but it is the Easter that has been given to us. If we had had a choice in this Easter, this church would be full. There would be an incredible feast waiting for us right after this service. People would be all dressed up the next day. At several different services, we would have an incredible celebration. Family traditions would be observed. And people would be wearing new clothes, new dresses, which is an ancient practice in which people would take something new and put it on to symbolize the new life they had in Christ. And then all of us would go and have a feast after some of us had engaged in a Easter egg hunt on the front lawn of the church and many of those new clothes, particularly white dresses and and brightly colored pants, would be just stained beyond recognition with grass stains. And everybody would go home joyful. There would be flowers everywhere. There would be families everywhere. There would be brass and timpani, and it would be wonderful. And we'd be all here together. That would be the Easter that we would have chosen for ourselves. But the Easter that has been given to us by God is very different. It's an Easter in which we are learning to realize that we are more than the traditions we observe that the God that we worship in Jesus Christ is larger than any building that can hold it, any community that we are, that the truth of the matter is that these things can sometimes even get in the way of us seeing the radical nature of the good news of Jesus Christ that we celebrate today. Because today, we have an opportunity to go back to our deepest resources, to the things that keep us going when times are tough, to the truth that is like the North Star that helps us find our way in the night, to the things that help us to carry on when we feel tired, to help us lift up our heads when we feel bowed down by grief, that help us to walk with faith when we are full of fear. For today, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that good news is undiminished by the fact that we are not full today of people. It is not undiminished by the fact that we have no children wearing new clothes. It's not uh, undiminished by the fact that we don't have brass or timpani to celebrate this day. It's not undiminished that we don't have an Easter egg hunt. It's not, un- it's not diminished by the fact that we don't have all the things that we usually do on this day to celebrate the resurrection of God in Christ. In fact, there is a sense in which the Easter that God has given us has heightened to us the power of the resurrection in our lives. Because I stand before you today to say with the fullness of my being, with every ounce of energy I have, Christ is risen. And Christ has defeated the power of sin and death in the grave, the three things that entrap us all, that hold us all. And Christ has given us the power to join him and to be full and filled with him and to walk with him and to build his kingdom together. And that kingdom is built wherever we go with the power of the resurrection to preach the gospel and be the hands and feet of Christ and the heart of Christ in this world and to see in each other the face of Christ. So there is nothing that has happened to us that can diminish that truth. There is nothing that can stand in the way of that proclamation. You and I are called to lift up a risen Lord. And thanks be to God, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cannot be confined 
by these things that we so often observe as we follow the seasons of this year. And in fact, if I can say anything, I would say that having been pushed back to our deepest resources, being forced to dig deeply into our scriptures and find out again what does it mean to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the midst of death, in the midst of fear, in the midst of a pandemic, we discover again what the first Christians discovered when they saw Jesus who struck and made soldiers as if they were stone. Because God has called us not to simply survive this pandemic. God has called us to revive our souls and to experience a bit of revival as someone wrote to me earlier today. We are not simply looking to survive. We are not simply looking at some way of survival. We're looking at a way of being revived. We're looking for revival. And it's in times precisely like this that you and I find ourselves confronted and forced with our backs against the, lo- the wall to suddenly say that we will follow Christ. We will testify to his truth, come whence it may, cost what it will. And we will go into this world and begin our work as messengers of grace. Our gospel today highlights a couple of things, but the one thing that I want to say in the midst of its call to mission is that the gospel calls us to be a kind of messenger For at the core of today's gospel that struck me so much, that seems to capture the work that you and I have to do, is the passage in which we read that the first people who reached the tomb and found it empty encountered an angel. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, he is risen, and go and meet him in Galilee. And soon after that, the first people to see the risen Lord, see him in the flesh, and he says to them, do not be afraid, I have been raised, and go tell my brothers, and we will meet you all in Galilee. And that first message comes by way of an angel, by way of someone sent from heaven with a message of resurrection. And keep in mind that the name angel didn't just mean a heavenly being. It didn't just mean someone who was able to somehow stand in the face of God and live and deliver a message to humanity. It meant fundamentally someone who bore a messenger. The word angel is from the Greek, angelos. It means messenger. So angels are not just people who visit God and visit humanity and somehow stand in between that incredible gap. But angels are anyone who bear a message. And today's gospel encourages us all to be messengers of resurrection, to be angels of resurrection, to say to this world that is feeling gripped with fear, do not be afraid. To say to this world which is feeling touched by death, Christ is risen. To say to this world in which we are afraid and confined and sheltering in place, go, you will meet him just as he promised you. So the question I have today is what does your angelic ministry look like? What is the message that you have been called to give? And what is that message of resurrection look like when you take it on? For some of us, that's going to be a work of prayer, and so many of you that I know have found yourselves praying intensely during this time, and that is appropriate because prayer is an incredible ministry 
It's an angelic ministry through and through. Because in prayer, we gather together the longings of our community, the hopes of our community, the fears of our community, and we lay them at God's feet, knowing that somehow when we place our prayers before God, God has already answered them. And prayer is, in some ways, a kind of social project. Because in prayer, we think about the state of affairs that would be ideal for people in this world who are suffering, people who are poor, people who are powerless, people who are fearful, people who feel ostracized, people who are unwelcomed. And we imagine and lift those people up before God and immediately there is an enlargement of a community of longing. So prayer is a kind of work of justice. It's not merely an offering we give to God. It's not merely a pleading for God to be involved in our narrow lives. It's for God to enlarge our hearts and to see our world and each other anew. So perhaps today you're called to pray. And perhaps your angelic ministry of resurrection that you have today is to pray for others and to learn to pray as you never have before. Still for others, your angelic ministry might be actually finding ways to do some good in the world around you, and so often those things are appearing all around us as we are still somehow observing the, the protocols that are in place to shelter in place. But somehow this congregation has in a remarkable way found ways to serve others even in the midst of what we are facing in our day-to-day -day lives. And so over the past week, we have given 100 packages full of beautiful little products to just nurture the healthcare staff of the Henry Ford Hospital. And we have raised thousands of dollars to ensure that the healthcare workers who are currently working in 30 hospitals somehow get a wonderful restaurant cooked meal as a kind of uplift and, and moment of self-care so that they can continue to do the angelic work they are doing as essential workers. So one of the ways in which you might feel called to bear an angelic ministry of resurrection to this world, gripped by fear, is to somehow find ways that God might use you still. And finally, there are those of you who are called to embrace. And that, of course, is another angelic ministry by calling people up and checking in on them, by drawing them closer, by telling them that they are not forgotten, not forsaken, that they are loved, that they are desired, and that God is in their lives even through you. That also is a kind of angelic ministry. But of course, all of this goes with the grain of what God is calling us to do at the beginning of this crisis that we found ourselves in with the incredible guidance and help of my brother and sister clergy, we came up with a vision that we would still be somehow in the midst of this pandemic, a church that gathers and a church that serves and a church that embraces. And over the past few weeks, we have done just that. We continue to gather for prayer and so many of you are coming and feeling the resurrection flow through you as a kind of promise that today is fulfilled. And so many of you have found ways to serve others in ways that I find simply astonishing and a complete blessing and confirmation of what God is doing in our midst. And I've had the incredible privilege of telling 
politicians and community leaders who somehow I've been in contact with over the past few weeks that God has called us to this position of leadership because God had this day in mind and that they are truly angels. They have an angelic ministry of leadership now and the way they are serving others. And all of us are called to serve and to continue to be a church that serves because that's what churches do. And finally, we have had an incredible group of volunteers who have advanced a ministry of embrace, of reaching out to everybody that is associated in one way or another in this church. And we have reached out over the past three weeks and contacted 75% of our fairly large database of parishioners. And we've checked on them We've made sure they were okay. We asked how we could help them, and we asked how we could pray for them. So you, my brothers and sisters, have been pursuing and giving and doing already an angelic ministry. You, my brothers and sisters, have been enfolded into the proclamation we celebrate today that Christ is risen and that there is no need for fear, and that we will meet him, and he is real. The art I have for you today is from Bill Viola's video installation. It was done in 2001. It was called Five Angels for the New Millennium. And Viola took these angel, these, these, he created these video installations by bathing in different colors of light, images of people going into water and coming out and somehow finding in that incredible um, uh, movement a kind of transformation that happens, a kind of descent and ascent that seemed almost angelic. And so here is one of the angels who has dropped down and the figure of the angel is a bit like Christ himself. It's cruciform. And the figure has hit just at the bottom of where it is, and now it's on its way up back to break the surface. And this is an angel for the new millennium, which was his way of trying to identify the spiritual connection, the kind of mystery that is at work all around us. This is his way of describing what it means to be an angel, a messenger, to deliver a powerful message that is often hidden from the naked eye as you live into the good news of Christ's resurrection in your life, as you feel moved to help people gather, to serve people, to embrace people, as you feel moved to stand firm in your faith in the midst of the fear that surrounds you, as you feel moved to proclaim Christ as risen. May you imagine new ways. May you see new things. May the, all the spiritual things around you which are invisible become visible to the eyes of your heart. May we be surrounded by angels this day and always. May we listen to their message of resurrection, and may we meet Jesus face to face.